Hello, let's do polyatomic ions. What do we mean by polyatomic ions? Well, a polyatomic ion is a group of tightly bound atoms that behaves as a single unit and carries an overall charge. So this is where we move away from what we were doing, which were the binary ionic compounds. For example, sodium chloride, <coughs> excuse me, um, where you just had two atoms, a positive and a negative, joining together. They're the binary ones. This is, gets a little bit more complicated. So these groups of atoms bound together, let's have a couple of examples. One is carbonate. There, in the formula, you can see there's one carbon and three oxygens joined together, and overall it has a minus two charge. That's what it looks like and one carbon with three oxygens and a minus two charge. Now, these joins here between the carbon and the oxygens are what we call covalent bonds. And that's where the electrons are shared. And they're very, very strong. Much stronger than the ionic bond that we're going to get. And so we don't break these guys apart. When we use them in our formulas and equations, um, only in special situations would we break the carbonate apart. In precipitation reactions, um, where we're just mixing things together, we will not change these, car these polyatomic ions, their formulas. Uh, ammonium is another one. Ammonium's very interesting because it's pretty much the only positive polyatomic ion you have to worry about. And it's a nitrogen with four hydrogens joined on. Not to be confused with ammonia, which has the formula NH3 and no charge. And this is what ammonium looks like. And yeah, so that's all. these are all bound close together and we generally don't break them apart um, unless we have a specific thing happening. Now if you go to your table of ions, and these are your negative ions, you can see that these there's quite a lot of polyatomic ions and they all have their own specific name and you with a bit of practice you get to pick out which name it is be on the lookout for things like the difference between sulfate which is SO42- minus, and hydrogen sulfate um, that usually catches people same with hydrogen sulfide hydrogen sulfites and hydrogen phosphates um, just be on the lookout now when you write and use any of these polyatomic ions, you've got to use exactly what is shown here. You can't change these formulas. And so if you're talking about sulfates, it's always SO4. And we can't change that. Now remember, the only positive polyatomic ion we needed to worry about was ammonium. And you'll, I haven't got that here, but you can see that on your information sheet it's in your table of positive ions. Let's have a go at making some compounds. Ammonium phosphate, probably start with the more complicated one. Why not? So the method of writing the formula for this compound is the same as when we did it for binary ionic compounds. So we treat it exactly the same even though it's not a binary compound. It's just a little bit more complicated. And so we write the symbol. Now let's do the, I can do the crossover technique Let's have a go at that. So we would have the positive ion, okay, and then we have the negative ion, positive ions NH, let's make that a better H, NH4 plus, and that's got a little invisible one there, and the negative ion is the phosphate ion, PO4 minus 3. And if we use the crossover technique, that invisible one goes down there and tells us we need one of these guys. And that three comes down there and tells us we need three of these guys. Now that's pretty straightforward. Hopefully you understand that. Now, the difficult part, the bit that really stuffs up students is they get confused by the fact that the polyatomic ions have these other numbers down here. And so when we go and write, how do we write the fact that we want three ammoniums? Well, let's do it. Let's get purple. So 
we first of all just show our ammonium ion. Now how do we show we want three? Well pre the, e the way we recommend, or the way you have to do it, is you put it in brackets and you put a three as a lower subscript around the brackets. So this is three times everything in the bracket. And then because we only want the one phosphate, we don't need a bracket around it. We can just write it PO4. And that would be the formula. Now that confuses a lot of students. What are some of the things I see? Well, they take this three and they then go, well, it's three times four. And so the most common one I see would be that. All right. Another variation is, well, I've said that we want three of these. So we'll put a three in front of it because that's what we've done in the formula. Okay, that gives us, like when we balanced equations, that looks pretty good. And then you just write PO4. Now the problem with this one, hopefully you identify it, is this three is not just three times the ammonia. Because it's on the outside of the whole formula, it's three times everything. And we use square brackets to show that. Yep. Uh, what's another mistake people make? Okay, they go, they don't even put it in brackets, that's another one. They go 3NH4PO4. Okay, that's not the right thing, that's just saying 3 of this formula, which is something we have no idea about. Um, and, alright, you'll probably come up with some other ones, but they're all wrong. The only one that's right is this one. Okay, now just be aware that we're using the brackets and that's helpful. So a bit of practice, what do they say? Here they go, they use the invisible balances. They recognize you need three of these and one of those to get the plus three and the minus three and they write the formula. Note that brackets need to be used whenever more than one single polyatomic iron is needed to balance a formula. This is the only time they are used. Ah, that's one of the variations I see is sometimes students will get the ammonia right. They'll write N H4 bracket 3 and then they add another set of brackets just to put the phosphate iron by itself. You don't need these brackets. Just writing down here, just writing PO4 tells us there's one of them there. So let's try and avoid those common mistakes. Be on the lookout for them and you'll get them right. All the questions right. Fantastic. So you're going to do this table in class. So don't worry about doing it now. And just one thing I need to mention to you so you can do it when you get into class. The empirical formula is the simplest ratios. So if you do your crossover method, remember we uh, did a crossover method and you can reduce it. So we used an example of MgO. Let's just MgO. We combine magnesium ion with oxygen ion and if we did the crossover technique it would look like that and then we reduced it to the simplest ratio MgO. So this guy here, the simplest formula, is the empirical formula. There's a new term for you. So the empirical formula is the simplest representation of the formula. Right. There's that answers. There's a whole lot of questions for you to do in class. Can't see any big tricks there. Okay. Yep. And so in the next video, we're going to have one of our more major topics, which is precipitation reactions. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Hey, see you later.